So originally, a lot of the test jigs that are made by the manufacturer, it's actually the control board that you have to flash with a certain firmware, as well as use a uh, tester file to run the, uh, run the control board and make it actually do a test on the individual hash boards. Uh, but some of these other third-party test jigs uh, allows you to do at least a, what I call a PT1 test um, or a basic test. So this is the Stasic tester. I uh, can actually test just about most makes and models. So it can do amp miner, it can do what's miner, it can do inosilicon. There's also other attachments and other products that Stasic has available, um, like the Stasic Finder, which you can actually then be able to test like Canon units as well. They also have something called the Stasic Box. So basically what this does is, is it helps you inject voltage. So let's say you have zero ASIC and you find where the break is. You can then put this on ground and this on the test point for the return signal and see if it actually brings the, all the ASICs back. So it just injects voltage. So we'll go ahead and use one of these Stasix. The ones that we send out will actually update the firmware for you before we send it out to you. So that way it'll be currently up to date. Now as stated, it can do a bunch of different models. So when you're using this unit, you want to make sure that you're not plugging this in directly to like your computer. You want to make sure that you're actually using a block for it. So you want to make sure that you're using at least a, a two amp regular USB block to power this unit. That way it'll be as stable as possible for the frequencies that go through the actual unit. Yep. So let's go ahead and do a test on this. So you want to make sure you're using a variable power supply for this. You don't want to be using uh, even the manufacturer's power supply unit. It needs to be an actual variable. This will help keep the signal very stable. So when we're connecting, we always put the ground first, which is right next to the IO data port. Then the red lead second. Then from there, we want to connect the data cable. Now it's important to note that on the Stasic, it actually has two different kinds of connectors for male connectors. The smaller one goes to the, your actual hash board, while the bigger one goes to your Stasic unit. From there, you want to connect your hash board. Then we can go ahead and cl uh, click on the model. This is the S19 regular unit. And as you can see, it shows you all the different chips and where they're located on the board. So we'll go ahead and power on our variable power supply. Want to set it to between like 13, 14 volts. If in doubt, you can always go and look at your power supply and see what your output is. And then you usually want to put it on the higher end of the voltages. So as we're looking at the power supply, we want to make sure that there's no amps drawing right away, at least for this board because we have MOS chips that are going to stop that voltage and current from flowing. So we'll actually see it showing zero amps. So we'll go ahead and press the start test button. And we can see all these chips are good. 
Now it's very important that when you're using a test jig or a test fixture that you're always calibrating your test jig to a working board. That way you can verify that yes, it will indeed work on a working board. So now when you're doing a test on a broken board, you know it's gonna work proper. Now you can also with this unit, you can read uh, the temperature sensors. It'll show you where they're placed on the unit as well. And you can also update the EFROM info on these boards. Now you can, while you use the uh, start test mode, you can go ahead and test different test points. So for example, we want to set our multimeter to DC voltage. We can then go ahead and put our black lead or negative lead on ground and our positive lead on the power. Now we can see the voltage coming in we can see the voltage coming after the MOS. We can also see the boost. So one interesting thing to point out about this tester is, is that it kind of sets the amps up and down on the board. So that way it's not really putting a whole bunch of current through those traces and everything so it helps prevent the board from overheating. Sometimes we need to actually connect the test jig uh, with some fans on it to cool it down faster. So go ahead and turn off the power. We can stop the test. Now we want to do the opposite. We take off the data cable first, then the power, and then the ground. So that shows uh, exactly the Stasic tester does.